Hi, I'm Ben Hinkey. I'd like to show you a bit about Pixel Blaze, my new Wi-Fi pixel controller and pattern editor. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is the save pattern list. Uh, so when you first load up the web page here, this is what you'll see. And there's a list of the different patterns that are stored in the controller. Um, and you can click on any of these to load it up, uh, to select it, and also to start editing the pattern if you want to do that. You can download these patterns for sharing with other people or delete them if you don't want them anymore. Um, so let's jump in and take a look at Fast Pulse. So with that loaded up, the first thing you'll notice is there's a live preview up here. There's some interesting stats up here, frames per second and total instructions per second through the expression engine. Um, you have a live editor here, so you have global expressions that are evaluated once per update, and then pixel expressions that are evaluated for each pixel. Um, and this is all compiled live. Um, there's a little syntax checker, so if you typo something, give something the wrong number of arguments, uh, it lets you all know that right away. Uh, any changes that you make that are valid are immediately sent to the strip and updated, and you'll see that up here. So let's let's tweak this a little bit, and um, using the HSV function, which is sending a hue, saturation, and value to the, the pixel, we're going to adjust the hue just a little bit. So right now it's using this T1 variable, which as you can see up here is coming from a uh, time function. Time function is is wrapping around from 0 to 1 over a time interval. And that's fed in through uh, through here to the HSV function. So what we could do is we could actually take this and change it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add to that, because uh, we want it to change over time, where I'm just going to add the value, which is the uh, the brightness here. And so you can see up on the top, you know, we get this kind of color starburst. Um, but let's, let's speed that up a little bit. So maybe multiply that by 5. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. Um, and now down here, you have the uh, save preview uh, that is generated uh, after you make any kind of edits. And if you hit update, that'll save it into the patterns. Um, if you don't like this, you can click on it to regenerate it. Um, and so this is the pattern editor. To make a new pattern, you just click the new expression button and you get started off. As soon as we type in a valid pattern, it's going to send that down to the chip. So let's give it a really simple uh, HSV with just some static values in there. All right, so we just got a solid bright red. Again, the first one is the hue, and this is the color. So uh, this uh, loops around from zero to one. Um, there's some documentations with the color wheel, kind of showing how that, you know, how to kind of visualize what this looks like. But you know, zero is the same thing as one. Um, but we do something like 0.1, we get a totally different color up here. Now you notice this is all the same for all the pixels, since I haven't incorporated any variables that are changing based on the pixel. So we have, uh, you know some numbers we could just type in here this is all compiled on the fly sent down to the chip um, but there's a few variables that we can use to make things interesting uh, so one of those is I and I is the um, the number of the pixels starting with zero all the way through the, the end of the strip now of course because these are whole integers uh, this is basically staying in the same position as it loops around through each whole number so we need to you know maybe divide this by 10 you can see up here we've got some numbers in between 0 and 1 um, as the pixels progress and we get this nice kind of rainbow type thing uh, if we wanted that one a rainbow that stretched over the entire strip we could use the L variable which is uh, the total length of the strip in pixels so if we do that you get a smooth rainbow throughout the entire strip um, now another thing we can do is we can change this over time so I'm just going to take this number and offset it by uh, some time. Now the time function uh, takes an argument uh, that basically represents how quickly the interval is going to um, loop over. Uh, and so the smaller the number, the faster it's going to be. So let's do something like 0.1 uh, so we can see it moving pretty good. And you know, you can keep going. You can make this, you know, pretty fast. Yeah, that's maybe a little bit too fast. Okay. Let's let that render out. So now that I have a preview, let's say I like this, I can go ahead and save this, you know, uh, and hit save, and it'll show up over on the uh, save patterns list. So that's a quick how-to about how to write an expression, but for the documentation, it's actually just below here on the page. There's a whole write-up about how to write all these expressions, what kind of operators you can use, you have all kinds of constants, all the usual math functions. So you have things like HSV, you could use RGB if you choose to. Um, and down here, there's actually some, some functions that are very useful for um, writing these patterns. So you have the time function, which is giving you a sawtooth wave between 0 and 1. 
um, and that's looping over every so often. If you wanted to, you could turn that into a square wave uh, with a specific duty cycle uh, magnitude, uh, a triangle wave. So this will turn that um, sawtooth into more of a triangle. Um, or if you want something that's more of a sine wave, you can use the wave function. This will still keep it between zero and one, which is very useful for, you know, hue, saturation, and value. Um, whereas the the mathematical sine function is going to give you a value that's you know varies between negative and positive one. Uh, so this wave is is scaled out for you.